Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today I'm going to go through the following problem from complex analysis. We're going to show that if C is in the real numbers, then e to the minus pi C squared is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative pi x squared times e to the negative 2 pi i x C dx. Okay. Now, before I get started, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It helps me to keep making these videos, as well as it'll let you be able to see the next time I post something like this, if these are the sorts of videos that help you. Okay, and with that out of the way, let's get going. So we're going to break this up into a few different cases. So case one is if C is equal to zero. Well, if that's the case, then we are just trying to show that one is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity, of e to the negative pi x squared times 1 dx, which has already been shown to be true, so you can watch my video on that if you would like to see that. But that is something that has already been established. Okay, our next case is if c is less than 0. Well, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to make the following substitution. So, let's look at the integral from negative infinity to infinity e to the negative pi x squared, e to the negative 2 pi i x c uh, dx. Well, what we have here is we are going to make the substitution u is equal to negative x. So that'll turn this into the integral from infinity to negative infinity, e to the negative pi u squared, e to the 2 pi i u uh, c times a negative du. Well, this negative can be pulled out front and then be used to change the uh, orientation of the integral. So this is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative pi u squared e to the 2 pi i u c du. Now, why is this helpful? Well, what would happen if we want to reintroduce the negative sign in this thing here? Well, then we have to introduce the negative sign somewhere else, so let's just stick it with the C. Well, negative C is going to be positive, so that actually turns this into the integral from negative infinity to infinity, e to the negative pi u squared, e to the negative 2 pi i u absolute value of C, du which means that it doesn't matter if c is positive or negative, it's going to do the same thing. So we can assume without loss of generality that c is positive. Okay, so we're going to just assume that c is positive. Okay, so now that we have assumed that, we are going to be integrating the following function. We are going to look at f of z equals e to the negative pi z squared, okay? So this function is an entire function. So that means it's holomorphic everywhere, so we're going to be great, which then also means that the integral over any contour that is closed of f of z, this is going to be equal to zero. So now we're going to try and pick a contour that's going to help us out a lot. And the contour we're going to want to be looking at is going to be this one. So here are our axes, and we are going to be looking at the contour that does this. We are going to look at a rectangular contour that goes out to r and negative r, and then up here to r plus i, c and negative r plus i c. So that's going to be our rectangle and we're going to have it in the positive orientation. So we have that. Now we're going to go through and figure out how does this help us out? Well we know that the integral over the entire contour is going to be zero. So that means that we know that zero is equal to the integral from, and we're going to just break this up into the four pieces the integral from negative r to r of f of z dz plus the integral from r to r plus i c 
of f of z dz plus the integral from r plus i c to negative r plus i c of f of z dz plus the integral from negative r plus i c to negative r of f of z dz. All right, now we're going to have to rewrite these a little bit to get these to be better written integrals, but that's going to be the basic idea of what we're going to do. We're going to break this down into these four different pieces, and we're going to deal with each piece separately. Okay, so let's go through and look at each of these pieces one at a time. So for this first one, what this is going to be is we're going to be looking at, here, let's just write these parameterizations under each one. So this one's going to be z of t is just going to be equal to t. The position is just going to go from negative r to r. It's going to act exactly as we would expect. This one, this one we're going to say that z of t is equal to r plus i t. This one's going to be z of t is equal to um, let's see, we'll have it be uh, t plus i c, and then this one is going to be negative r uh, plus i t. Whoops, z of t. Okay, so those are going to be our different parameterizations, and if we go through each of these pieces separately, let's write down what those integrals are. So this first one, that's going to become the integral from negative r to r of e to the negative pi t squared dt. Wonderful. We already know what this one is. We established that at the start. This is just 1. So we have that one done already. We have 1 fourth of our problem complete. We're, we're golden. We're going great. Okay. This next one, what we're going to have is this will be the integral from 0 to c of f of z. So that's going to be e to the negative pi r plus i t all squared times i dt. Okay, so we have that one. This next one's going to be the integral from r to negative r of e to the pi times t plus i c squared dt. And then we have plus the integral from c to 0 of e to the negative pi uh, negative r plus i t squared uh, times i dt. All right, so we have all of these different pieces. We are going to look first at this one and this one together. So looking just at this last one, let's try and figure out what can we do with that. So, what do we got there? Well, we have the integral from c to 0, e to the negative pi times negative r plus i t squared times i dt. Well, going from c to 0, that's not ideal. Ideally, we'd have it go from 0 to c again. So let's going, we're going to make another u substitution. So we are going to say u is equal to negative t. And so then what this is going to turn into is this is the integral from 0 to c of, let's see, we got, oh, whoops. All right, so here we go. Let's, let's see. So if we make the substitution, u equals negative t, then this becomes the integral from negative c to 0 of e to the negative pi negative r minus i u times negative i du. That's squared there. But then this ne these negatives here, that's just getting squared, so we can really just look at that as being r plus i to the u squared. And then this is actually an even function. So this is the same thing as, so this, let's see, this is going to be the same thing as the inter, as negative integral from 0 to c of e to the negative pi r plus i u squared 
I D U. Well, isn't that nice? That's exactly what we have right here. Those two pieces cancel each other out perfectly. So both of those just go to zero. They'll always cancel each other out, which is really, really nice. That means the only thing we're dealing with is we have zero is equal to one plus the integral from, here, let me pull it down again. Zero is one plus the integral from r to negative r of e to the negative pi t plus i c squared dt. So we're dealing with just this piece right here. So what are we able to do with that? Well, we are going to expand out that squaring in the exponent. So this gives us 0 equals 1 plus the integral from r to negative r of e to the negative pi times t squared plus 2 i t c minus c squared dt. And now we're going to look at the uh, real and imaginary parts. We're going to pull this apart. So this is going to be 1 plus and actually, let's just also switch the order of integration. So going from negative r to r. So that's going to make it a negative there. e to the negative pi t squared. e to the negative negative. So that's a positive pi c squared. And then e to the negative pi times 2 i t c dt. This doesn't have any t's in it, so we can pull that out front. So that's a 1 minus e to the pi c squared integral from negative r to r of e to the negative pi t squared e to the negative 2 pi i t c dt. Zero is equal to that. So if we go through and solve for this integral, because that is really close. In fact, if we just take the limit as r goes to infinity, that's exactly what we're wanting to get. So if we solve for that, what we can do is we get, well, e to the pi c squared times that integral from negative r to r of e to the negative pi t squared, e to the negative 2 pi i t c dt. That's equal to 1. So if we cancel this term and move it over here, that becomes e to the negative pi c squared, which is exactly what we were wanting to show. So we have actually finished this proof. We were able to go through and do this all the different pieces that we needed to do. Now, we could have also done this by bounding both this integral and this integral, but I really liked the fact that they canceled each other out. Like, I think that was really, really cool and hopefully you did as well, but we have successfully shown that e to the negative pi c squared is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative pi x squared e to the negative 2 pi i x c dx. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like it and subscribe it, and please uh, show this to your friends who are also in the advanced math classes. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that you would need to show this to your art major friends, although hopefully they enjoy C and would be able to draw it a lot better than I can. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and good luck with all of your math.